Hello and welcome back. My name is Sophia and today we are going to be doing the unpopular book opinions tag. I saw Murphy Napier do this. Love her. And it looks really fun so I thought I would give it a shot. I will link her video down below, the questions, and the creator so you can click on it if you want. In general, I think that I agree with the masses except for the mass. Sarah, get it? I think I agree with the general population when it comes to books. Whenever I like a book, it's typically over four stars on Goodreads, and then when I don't, it's under. So let's see, let's dive into the questions. Question one is a popular book series that you did not like. So I've mentioned Throne of Glass, and I mentioned A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass, so I'm not gonna go into those. But the Heroes of Olympus series, which is the spin-off of Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, I could not get into. I just, I didn't like Jason, one of the main characters, because he had no personality. Piper was so annoying. Leo, absolute king, no hate towards him. He was the only reason that I got through the first book and partway through the second book that I then DNF'd, but just the Roman camp was not as interesting as Camp Half-Blood. Percy wasn't in any of it, and the book was so long, so yeah. Probably not going to ever pick up any Rick Riordan series again because they're all spin-offs of Percy Jackson, and that's just the Heroes of Olympus series is so key to the rest of the spin-offs, which is quite sad, but yeah, book series didn't like, couldn't get into. A popular book series that everyone else hates but you love. I feel like they're mostly my childhood favorites. So 39 Clues, those were huge at my middle school. I think I read the 11, the 11 books of the main series and then four books of one spinoff and one book of another spinoff. So I've in total read about 16 of these books. I love the adventures between Dan and Amy. I think Amy was 14 and Dan was 11 and I was around Dan's age when I was reading it so I really looked up to Amy and I wanted to be Amy and Amy reminded me of one of my really good friends who was very responsible. Her name is Maya. Love you, Maya. <laughs> but yeah, so I just kind of, I wanted to be Amy. So I really enjoyed the series and I liked the mystery and trying to find all of the 39 clues. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And I don't know why people don't like it. I guess, yeah, I don't understand. I think you really have to be a middle schooler to enjoy it, to relate to these characters because everybody in the series is kids, basically. And then the adults are kind of like mentor figures along the way. Another series was Aragon. Again, I read it when I was really young. I think I read Aragon when I was in elementary school. So it was one of the first fantasy series that I've ever touched. So I had I didn't know any of the common tropes that you see. So for me, it was all the first time of experiencing every single trope. And that's basically what Aragon is. It's a bunch of fantasy tropes rolled into one book. There was a blue dragon. Blue clearly still my favorite color. So yeah, I really liked Aragon. And then the next series that I really liked that other people didn't like, Golden Compass, surprisingly. I had them on cassette tapes. Like I had a little cassette tape player that I would put in after when I got home from school and I'd eat my little snack and play the cassette tape of Golden Compass. I was obsessed with Philip Pullman's writing. I think Lyra had, what was it called? It was like a demon, daemon, something like that, named Pan. And instead of describing every event or any setting that you had, she had conversations with Pan to explain what was going on and what, what everything looked like that just really kept the story moving. And I just loved Pullman's writing. It was so elegant. And any writing assignment that I had early on in middle school, I would listen to that series. And then my writing would just be beautiful because his writing is beautiful. I love it. I think it's a trilogy and I've listened to that trilogy countless times. I, I think the other two books in the series have gotten better ratings than Golden Compass. Golden Compass was judged pretty harshly and I'm surprised by that. A love triangle where the main character ended up with the person you did not want them to end up with. Warn people for spoilers. I don't remember a lot of the books that have love triangles in I just didn't really enjoy and have kind of forgotten about so I can't think of any that I didn't really like 
Yeah, I just don't really read that many. I guess I haven't read the book. I've seen the movie. Um, <laughs> Jacob, I'm Team Jacob from Twilight. I mean, Taylor Lautner. How could you not be Team Taylor Lautner? Um, okay. <laughs> A popular book genre that you hardly reach for. I don't really reach for anything scary, so horror, mystery, anything that's gonna creep me out, stay far, far away from me. I don't, I don't watch horror or mystery movies anyways. Um, also, like, the literary, metaphorical, simile-filled books that, you, we would, that we would read in our English classes, I kind of stay away from those unless there's a kind of a superficial story that I can enjoy without delving too deep into the metaphors. You know, I, I read books to enjoy them. Like the one book that has a bunch of metaphors and similes that I can enjoy and appreciate is Great Gatsby because that's it has a really great surface level fun story element to it and then if you want to get deep and think about it and learn lessons from it you can it's like you can you can get as much from it as you want to get out from it so i enjoyed great gatsby but besides that books in that category of being very literary not my thing also flowery very flowery writing it's just hard for me to get through a popular or beloved character that you do not like popular oh you know who i don't like i do not like romeo uh from romeo and juliet man's is so whiny and he just needs better communication skills he is just way too fast to act he needs to calm down you need to calm down everybody in that story basically needed to calm down but especially romeo also juliet's brother but i think everybody doesn't like juliet's brother a popular author that you can't seem to get into. Okay, so I'm reading I'm reading a Game of Thrones right now, and George R. R. Martin, I'm having a really hard time getting through his writing. Also, I don't know if it's his writing or that I've already seen the Game of Thrones TV shows, so I know who's gonna die, and I'm not letting myself get attached to any characters that I know are going to die, or it's like Great, this guy, he's so annoying. I know he's gonna be annoying for a couple more books until he gets castrated and then he's gonna be okay. Or like, yep, that boy, he's getting beheaded soon. Or just you wait till the red wedding when any foreshadowing happens. It was nice to see the TV show and go into the books knowing the world, but now anytime that Martin uses world building or has any world building, I'm like, yep, great. We've been there, we've been new. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's just, there's no suspense for me anymore. A popular book trope that you are tired of seeing. Insta-love. Like when two characters meet and they just know that it's the one and soulmates, oh my God. Because I don't have time to actually care about the characters individually and then care about their relationship and really see how much they care for each other through slow, I just love myself a good slow burn. That's why I really appreciate friends to lovers because they understand one another's personalities, but also enemies to lovers because they start off not liking each other and then they have to grow into becoming friends and actually enjoying each other for their own personalities. Chosen one trope, not my thing. Love triangles, overdone. And they're to pulp overly angsty and I, I know I didn't remember any love triangles but I feel like generally when I read a love triangle I end up rooting for the person that doesn't get chosen because I feel like the author is just doing them dirty and setting them up to fail the whole time I can't I, I haven't read a good fresh love triangle for a while a popular book series that you have no interest in reading so I read infernal devices by Cassandra Clare I really enjoyed the first two books. I kind of did. The third book I will finish. It's kind of semi a DNF. I don't know. I will finish it one day. But I have no interest in reading The Mortal Instruments, which is her original Shadow Hunter series. And that's just because Clary is 15. And I just feel so strange reading about a 15 year old and her love life. And it just feels very young. I think I started Infernal Devices, which 
has like 16, 17 year old main characters when I was closer to that age. So I felt more comfortable reading about that. But I'm, I, I sound like I'm very old, but I'm 20. I just want to read books where people are closer to my age or slightly older. So I just, yeah, the whole Shadowhunter realm, I don't think I'm going to go back to it just because I feel like it's a bit too young for me to read about now. Also, okay, Outlander, I, I'm, I'm going to finish the first book. It's like a semi Diana, but I will, I will one day finish reading it. I just don't think that I'm going to finish the series because man, those books are thick. They are thick with three C's on them and I just can't do that to myself. And there's so many and yeah, I just, I would rather watch the show. The saying goes, the book is always better than the movie, but what movie or TV show adaptation do you prefer more than the book? Okay, this one I think might be a bit controversial, but Order of the Phoenix, which is the fifth book in the Harry Potter series, I could not read, get through reading it. It was just so depressing to me. I just, it was so dark, depressing. I wasn't enjoying it. And then I saw the movie and I thought the movie did a really good job of kind of glossing through a lot of the really heavy and depressing things. And then there was that really cool maze of skulls and I don't remember what it was. I, I thought that the movie did a really good job and it was really enjoyable. And I never ended up finishing the fifth book and I moved on to the sixth book with having the movie knowledge from it. And I was cool with that. I hope you were cool with that. Those were my unpopular opinions. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in my next video.